The Trump administration is set to honor Doris Miller, World War II hero, at an up and coming Martin Luther King Day Memorial in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Doors closing. Miller became the first African American to earn the U.S. military's second highest decoration, the Navy Cross for Valor, receiving it from the Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet, Admiral Chester Nimitz. And now, nearly eight decades later, CVN-81, to be constructed at Newport News Shipbuilding, will become the first aircraft carrier ever named for an African American, the USS Doris Miller. Usually, carriers are named for presidents or prominent politicians, but this one will be named in honor of an enlisted sailor, a black man. Now, if you're not sure who Doris Miller is, he was a cook third class on December 7, 1941, when the first Japanese torpedo struck. He then manned a 50 cal machine gun to repel the enemy, which as a black man at that time he had not been trained to use. Afterward, he helped to move injured soldiers away from the aircraft carrier, which had been damaged. Miller survived Pearl Harbor unscathed, but was killed in battle two years later. He will be the first black man to have an aircraft carrier named after him. The USS Miller will carry nearly 80 warships and be manned by 6,000 men and delivered to the U.S. Navy in 2032, a fitting tribute for a man that gave it all. This is a great day for black history and American history in general, and it's great strides for the race relations in this country. It comes at a great time, by the way. We know that this is not the first time Donald Trump has honored black people since his presidency began in 2017. Nearly two years ago, he honored Colonel Lorna Malik to be the first black female brigadier general to the U.S. Marine Corps. President Donald Trump nominated the first African-American female to become a general in the U.S. Marine Corps. Colonel Lorna M. Marlock, a soldier who has served in Germany and Japan, was nominated by President Trump in April 2018. She holds a whole host of distinguished qualifications, including a master's degree in adult and higher education from the University of Oklahoma at Norman, a master's in national security and strategic studies with distinction for the Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island, and a master's in strategic studies from the U.S. Army War College. Nearly a month ago, he appointed Stephanie Dawkins and honored her to be the first black female U.S. District Court judge to be appointed in Michigan. Judge Dawkins Davis has been an exemplary public servant who has worked hard and honorably to serve the people of the state of Michigan. She has earned the respect of colleagues across the state and garnered numerous awards uh, throughout her career. Not to mention he also added Ben Carson to his presidential staff, which most people don't consider to be black enough. Um, neither do they consider Tim Scott, who helped to author the U.S. Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which lowered the corporate tax rate from 35% to 21% and helped to bring back the infamous millions of jobs that the president campaigned on. Doris Miller will be the first black male to have an U.S. aircraft carrier named after him. And it just begs the question, how many of these things does Donald Trump's administration have to put forth before black people get the picture and say, you know what, maybe he's not a racist like these lying politicians would like to tell us. Maybe he's not a racist like the lying media who's owned by these lying politicians would like to tell us. Maybe he's not a racist like how these ignorant, unlearned black people who won't even look at information that you give them would like to tell us. Um, when, you, when you factor in prison reform, $100 billion to HBCUs, which was like the first thing he did as president, and $100 billion towards um, black enterprise, which is key, by the way, because I feel like as I stated in other videos, that black enterprise is the number one thing, aside from Jesus Christ, that we need in this country as black people. When you give a learned um, black person with a great idea the funding to advance that idea and to advance his uh, inventions and his, and his free thought, now we can make strides in this country in terms of generational wealth and uh, generational income and just keeping the, the money flow within our community such as like the Jews do and the whites do and the Asians do. We've always dreamed of this. This is the dream that Martin Luther King had. Now I'm not trying to say by no means that Donald Trump is like God to us, um, but in my young lifetime, I have never seen such a pro-black uh, president and he's probably the best president for black people since Abraham Lincoln. I mean, 
we say Bill Clinton was the first black president and he was so, you know, black because he was cool and he played the saxophone and he smoked weed and all this stuff, but he gave us the three strikes laws. I mean, the stop and frisk, you know, that, those, that was Democrats. All of these Jim Crow laws, all of that was Democratic presidents. You know, when you factor in all of those things, prison reform, $100 billion to HBCUs, $100 billion to black enterprise, this is the greatest president for black people since Abraham Lincoln. There's no doubt about it. And uh, at this time, I just feel like maybe we need to reconsider. We need to uh, get out there and vote. We need to use the power of the ballot and we just need to wake up because at this time we are bucking against the very thing that's allowing us to be free. This is the dream that Martin Luther King had and now we're just letting the Stockholm Syndrome play out. We're fighting against the very thing that's allowing us to advance uh, and, and progress as blacks and we are siding with the enemy, the people who lynched us, the people who cut our balls off, the people who attached us to two different horses and smacked them both and made them run in two different directions and things of that nature. Uh, it's just classic Stockholm Syndrome. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a sad day, but uh, again, with all of these different items on the list that are for black people, you can no longer say he's done nothing for black people, but what you can say is that Barack Obama didn't do anything for black people. He did more for the gay community uh, than he did for blacks. So yeah, again, it's just a great day um, in America for the black person. I really do believe that. I'm Isaiah Gates and you've been watching The Subway Train, the modern day Underground Railroad. Doors closing.